family wellness, right? So if I establish that there's value, I forward place them, give them the understanding of what are my three main questions when I review criteria testing. What's first? You're right. That's two. What's what's wrong? What's wrong? Get their clarification on what's wrong. Why do I want that? Because they might be totally what, or they might say I don't know. You ever get that? I don't know. I don't remember. But how great is that? Listen, you want them. You want to hear that because if they say I don't know and then, I, I don't remember, holy cow! What a, what an awesome opportunity is that to say okay, I'm glad you don't remember. Let's what? Let's, Let's talk about because you should know because how long has it been there for? Right, and as a result, what's happening? It's making you healthier or what? Sicker. You follow what I'm saying? That's critical. And then you can forward place them, and then you're building the 30-second drill to give them a clear understanding of what all that has to do with their neurology. And then once they understand what they have as their neurology, then you say, hey, who needs care? And they say, everybody. And then you can say, well, listen, you know, you're, I know it's your husband, and, and you have two daughters, and they're not under care. What can I do to help you get them under care? I mean, that's the only way to do it, and it's a wonderful way to do it. And a lot of times they'll say, no, you know, I'm not ready, or my wife will never come in, or whatever, and that's okay, too. You're not going to be mad at them. You're not going to judge them. The wife at home doesn't know what you know, right, or she'd be there, right? So then it gives you an opportunity to discuss with them your mission, your purpose, and let them know you're going to ask them again, okay? And that's critical. Then you want to do what? Thank them and gratitude. The highest state you could ever be in is gratitude, to be thankful, the blessings for what you have, right? It's not that the, the, the most happy, what is it, the most, uh, the happiest people aren't always, what, the most grateful for all the stuff they have. They tend to be most grateful for what they do have. And, and remember that because, you know, I can remember when I went to college and I was really happy. I had a Volkswagen bus, bought it for $125 from an SU student. I kid you not. The door fell off because it rusted, so if you open the side door, it would literally fall off. Your buddies would go, oh, like, don't open the door. Boom, fall on the ground. <laughs> and uh, I used to have oodles and noodles at Kmart. I used to buy oodles and noodles in a three-pack for a buck. Anybody been there before? <laughs> right? And they sold ragu sauce, which my parents would probably cry if they knew I was drinking ragu. But, but I mean, you know what I mean? But was life horrible then? You know what I mean? You didn't have a lot, but, you know, it was simple and I was happier, right? So, so know that when you're going forward. Be grateful and show that gratitude when you're talking to people in your practice. You know, Steve, I want to thank you so much for honoring me to be your doctor, to be your chiropractor. It's such an honor, and I thank you for trusting me with your health. Because aren't they trusting you with their health? Aren't they making a big leap? And they're, and they're paying you, and they're, and they're taking time out of their day to be here, to put their life in your hands, to make good decisions, and they trust in you that you're excuse me, making good decisions. So really, really important. I think it's critical. So you got to be in that state of gratitude. And then we get into the last part of the day, which is always going to be on what? Monday night. Well, yes, Monday night. But what's the last part? What's the last part of the afternoon going to be? Objections. Objections. Because listen, I've been doing this a long time, both as a chiropractor and as a coach. And everybody likes to tell me, well, that's easy for you, Dr. Joe. But what happens if they say this? What happens if they say that? What are you going to do if this happens? What are you going to do if that happens? What do you think? It doesn't happen in this office? I mean, it all happens. Some of it will happen less because we're probably better at handling some of the things initially. So you'll hear me say that on some of the coaching calls. I don't really get that a lot because we, you know, we didn't set it up for that to happen. Sometimes you're setting it up for that bad thing to happen right? But if you handle it right in the beginning, it's not going to happen or less likely. But that's okay. I wasn't always good at it initially either. So how do you handle it in the early stages so that doesn't happen? And what are you going to do if it does happen? How do you handle it? How do you salvage the mess? Because a lot of times we create messes, right? Because what's the mindset of the person that walks in? On, on average, what's their mindset? They're great people, but what, what's their mindset when they walk in? They don't get it. They don't get anything. They want to get popped to feel better. They want to get popped to feel better. How many times they want to come? One time times they want to pay? Nothing. Nothing. I mean, you got to understand, everybody goes through that. They walk in, wait, you're not going to do anything today? You're not going to crack me today? You know, I don't have to pay anything. You know, did you, oh, my insurance covers everything. You know, well, it does, but you got a $9,000 deductible. You know, good news, today's not nine grand. I mean, I could charge you 10, you know, but the reality is they don't understand. I don't mean to be disrespectful to those people that come in that want your care and that are looking for help, but understand they're, what they're utilizing you for and what your true understanding is is different. Plus, if they go to a therapeutic, if they if they receive care from a therapeutic healthcare practitioner, chiropractor, rather than a health-promoting chiropractor, and I hate to even use the distinction because there's chiropractic in my view and then there's everything else, okay? 
But if they're if they're in that everything else and they come in, now it's even a harder threshold because their expectation is going to be the same experience they had at the other office. Hey, I could just walk in any time. I he never charged me. She never charged me for my copay. I never heard the word subluxation. I don't know. It's only about mass side joint dysfunction. And then you start getting into these other conversations. It becomes very frustrating. So what what I do. And what I've learned to do is set up a set of procedures that are very, very efficient in taking the person that doesn't really understand a lot about what you do and offering them a series, if you will, of days of learning and education to build an enormous amount of value, clarity, and certainty about what it is you offer. So much so that they're going to say, wow, you know, not only is it good for me to be here, but it's probably a good idea to bring my family and my kids here. And, that, and then show you a way to nurture that to happen as well. Everything I do that I show you to do, or some, some of the things that you might say, well, he didn't do this. Trust me when I tell you, there's a reason that I do or I don't. I don't mind you asking me. You can challenge me on it. I don't care. But understand that everything I do has a reason. It has a purpose. There's a reason that I do day one, day two, day three. There's a reason I say this and don't say this on day one, day two, day three. It's critical to understand that. Because sometimes more isn't better. Sometimes we want to explain everything. And the bottom line is you, you often give them too much information. It only confuses them. And it makes what could be very clear and powerful, very fuzzy. And it makes it much harder for you guys, okay? So the best thing you can do is train to be as good as you can on the procedures and protocols that we show you. Uh, by all means, you guys, some of you guys have been coaching with me for a while. You guys are free to do whatever you want. It's, I'm not gonna hold you accountable. It's gotta be my way or you suck. I mean, that, Cause I don't agree with that anyways. But the reality is most of you will find what you'll do is you'll adopt a few things, they'll work out well, and then sometimes we get a little bit loose on some of the things we adopted, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, that sucks. Oh, that's happened? Oh, now I know why Joe said to do it that way. I get it now, right? And then you go a little bit further, and then you realize, well, I never did that, I never did this, and then you start taking on a few more things, right? And you're like, oh my God, that's freaking unbelievable. Why wasn't I doing that all along? And I'm looking at you, why weren't you doing that all along? But you also have to be ready to make those changes. So much of coaching I've realized over the years is life coaching. It's not just, it's not just here's the procedure. It's not just holding you accountable. It's building you up inside. The best place to build up inside is where? Where, where do you want to look to build yourself up inside as a chiropractor? Well, that, 100%, but where else? Where am I going to direct you to? The philosophy. I'm telling you, man, that is where to go. That gives you your why. It gives you your clarity. Just because there isn't a scientific study that says this is good, this whole this whole evidence-based, what a bunch of crap. I don't care. You know, Einstein said everything that counts can't be counted. You know what I'm saying? So if I go in CERN, and you guys have heard me say that before, and the intention of the, the uh, observer of the experiment changes the outcome of the experiment, how can you measure that? You can't. So your intention, of, are, you, are you cracking something to make it feel better, or are you adjusting something to relieve innate or allow the neurology to work better, however you want to word it, mental impulse or whatever, that has a profound effect on how well they're going to receive the care. It has a profound effect of what you're thinking, therefore it has a profound effect of what your conversation is going to be in the room, right? Because if you're thinking of the baseball game, what do you start talking about? If they're talking about the weather, what are they talking about? If you're thinking about the weather, what are they talking about? Whether if you're thinking about mental impulse or neurology or their body getting healthy and corrective subluxation, your tongue's your rudder. What do you start talking about? You don't even think about it. Yeah, you're talking about the neurology. You're talking about chiropractic. And all of a sudden, the conversations in here all become about, yeah, chiropractic, right? And then, you know, Steve, you've been... This friend gave me the best advice. He said each day's a gift and I...